Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be discussing a very exciting resolution to a somewhat ancient mystery. A mystery that's centuries in the making. And specifically a mystery in regards to this object you see right here. Something that astronomers have been searching for for a very long time and something that was accidentally discovered a few years back. And specifically we're going to be discussing a very very strange supernova that for an extremely long time remained completely unexplained because it has a really bizarre shape. It basically kind of looks like this and is extremely difficult to detect in a lot of different wavelengths. But when scientists analyzed the inside, it resembled a kind of a dandelion. And so for several years now, scientists have been trying to figure out exactly how this bizarre shape formed and what seems to be happening inside. And everything about this particular event and this particular supernova seems to be kind of strange. But in order to understand why this is such an exciting mystery, we actually have to go back a few centuries to 1181. So basically over 850 years ago. In August of 1181, ancient Chinese and Japanese astronomers recorded what they referred to as a guest star. And for a lot of Asian astronomers, back then this was really important because it was often connected to some kind of a very important celestial event that a lot of these ancient astronomers, or technically astrologists, would then use to interpret various political events. And back then, in ancient China, they got paid a lot of money to do all of this. And if they made a mistake, they basically got killed. And so anyway, in 1181, they saw a new one. This was believed to be somewhere in the constellation of Cassiopeia, and unlike a comet, remained completely motionless for approximately 185 days. Then it finally disappeared, which is why back then they referred to them as guest stars. They appeared and disappeared. And today we know that most of these ancient events were usually associated with either supernova or just nova. So basically classical nova that usually happen around white wars. I think there are some older videos in the description that explain these events a little bit more. But modern astronomers were able to link this event to an object you see right here, referred to as 3C58. This is basically a pulsar, which we know very likely was produced by a supernova, and because it was in a similar location, it was assumed to be caused by the 1181 supernova. However, something here didn't add up. Some of the more recent observations revealed that this pulsar is at least 3500 years old. And that's because it was spinning way too fast for something that should only be 850 years old. So basically this pulsar did not fit the timeline based on our understanding of how pulsars evolve. And for many many years this created a bit of a mystery. But then in 2013 an amateur astronomer Dana Patrick discovered something somewhat unusual while going through some of the infrared data that was collected by the WISE telescope over the years. And here he discovered his 30th object. So unofficially it became known as PA30, basically after his name Patrick. And well, it looked like this. And at first this was believed to be some kind of a planetary nebula, because it kind of resembled one. It was almost entirely round, and seemed to have some kind of a star in the center. But this until some of the more recent observations from 2019, when scientists discovered that something here was actually not adding up at all. For example, the central star was super super hot. And so here they realized this was not a normal planetary nebula or even a normal cloud, and instead seemed to be something we've never seen before. For example, it seemed to contain these unusual firework-like morphologies, consisting of very thin radial filaments or tendrils stretching from the center. And this actually has never been seen before in any of these objects. This was actually super difficult to explain. But to help us visualize this, the authors even compared the supernova to the famous Kingfish nuclear test from 1962. Here's actually the photo of this explosion on the left. And it seems to produce very similar radio filaments, basically resembling PA30. On top of this, this object was actually expanding really fast, much faster than any planetary nebula. For example, the filaments were moving at 1100 km per second, but the stellar wind was moving even faster, 16000 km per second or 5% of the speed of light. And no planetary nebula can produce something so ridiculously powerful. But by basically calculating the velocity and by trying to trace back when all of this started, it turned out to be approximately 850 years old. And because it was in a very similar location to that reported gas star, it now made a lot of sense that this is exactly what the Chinese astrologists were actually looking at. But one of the stranger mysteries was of course the star itself. 
So this was not just some kind of a pretty cloud, it was actually a kind of a multi-level mystery that was super difficult to explain. Because in the middle of this object, scientists discovered a star referred to as WD J005311. And as the name implies, this is a white dwarf. Now this is actually why it was believed to be a planetary nebula, because normally planetary nebula leave white dwarfs behind. But this was an extremely bizarre white dwarf. First, it was incredibly hot. 200,000 Kelvin. And that makes it one of the hottest, if not the hottest, stars in the entire Milky Way. For context, our sun is only about 5,000 Kelvin. And as I mentioned, the star is also producing an incredibly fast wind, moving at 5% the speed of light. And so eventually researchers realized that this was actually what's known as a zombie star, and specifically a remnant from an extremely rare supernova event, referred to as Type 1AX supernova. A supernova that doesn't destroy the star, but leaves something behind at the end. Now normally in a Type 1A supernova involving white dwarfs, the entire star explodes, leaving nothing behind. But in this Type 1AX event, the explosion seems to be much weaker and seems to be incomplete, and so instead of disappearing, the star actually survives as a kind of a supermassive object. In this case, it's approximately 1.5 solar masses. And it's actually believed to be the result of a binary collision, and specifically two separate white dwarfs, one made out of carbon and oxygen, and one made out of oxygen and neon. And so it was the collision and the murder of these two white dwarfs that seems to have produced this supermassive white dwarf, and an enormous explosion around it. And so a few years back, in some of the previous studies you can find any description, the researchers solved most of these mysteries, but not the shape. It was not entirely clear why this object appeared as a kind of a firework. So basically, why did the supernova in this case leave behind these strange tendrils instead of a much more smooth expanding cloud that we usually observe in most of these events? And that's precisely what this new study by Eric Coughlin and the team you see here focused on in this new study. They basically found a way to explain all of these tendrils and essentially confirmed the origin of this object once and for all. And while the main conclusion from the study is that a lot of these filaments were formed through something referred to as Rayleigh-Taylor instability. This is a very common phenomenon that usually involves two different liquids or two different gases that starts to produce these very beautiful shapes when the heavier fluid or the heavier gas starts to interact with something that's lighter and less dense. And so here the heavy fluid drips down through the lighter one, producing these beautiful formations. This is how a lot of cloud shapes are formed, and this is also what we see around other gas objects, like for example Jupiter and Saturn. But in case of PA30, the heavy fluid seemed to be incredibly dense and was moving very, very fast. And so because of this very fast moving wind from the zombie star and the much lighter fluids surrounding the object, it actually produced slightly different phenomenon. Now in normal supernova or in normal events, these finger-like formations are quite quickly shredded apart by another process referred to as kelvin helmholtz instability. This creates very messy turbulent shapes resembling cauliflower. That's essentially what you see right here. And this usually happens in most conditions involving two fluids or two gases of slightly different mass and density. By the way, this shredding effect is usually caused by something known as the velocity shear, or basically the difference in speed between two fluids moving past each other. And while in most space explosions, this creates very turbulent rolls and eddies that shear apart any thin spikes or very long tendrils, eventually turning them into messy cauliflower-like clouds. But for this particular object, the density of the zombie star wind was so, so much higher that the surrounding gas was completely suppressed. And so this shape was actually the result of extreme difference in density, which prevented the formation of these eddies and instead maintained these very long tendrils, almost needle-like in shape. And so basically fast velocity and the lack of friction from the surrounding gas prevented the formation of these spiral shapes. In more scientific terms, the kelvin helmholtz instability was completely suppressed. The spikes could not be destroyed. And that of course allowed these filaments to grow extremely long and very thin for approximately 850 years, which made them resemble this firework frozen in time. And that of course highlights how extreme this event was and how unusual everything about the supernova seems to be. And for astronomers, this is an incredibly important discovery because this is the only known Type 1AX supernova near us 
that we can actually study in a lot of detail. We've actually seen similar events far away from us in other galaxies, but they're millions of light years away from us, so they would be very difficult to study. This one though, we can actually even see inside, making this a perfect laboratory for studying things like star mergers and what happens when supernovas seem to fail and leave a very specific remnant behind. But this is also exciting for one additional reason. This zombie star is unstable. This is a white dwarf that's technically above its mass limit, referred to as the Chandrasekhar limit, suggesting that at some point the star might explode once again. As a matter of fact, based on recent studies, scientists discovered that the only reason it hasn't exploded yet seems to be Nickel 56. And specifically, it seems to actually stay alive and not explode because of radioactive decay of Nickel 56 that's essentially maintaining the pressure preventing the star from that second explosion. But this nickel has a half-life of only six days, which means that the star is actually able to do something super bizarre. It's so extreme that it allows this nickel to capture additional electrons, extending its life for centuries. But scientists believe that this balance is not going to last for very long. Right now, the prediction is that in approximately 10,000 years, or even less than that, this time it's going to explode once again and destroy everything around it. As a matter of fact, some studies even suggest that it might even happen during our lifetimes. So when it comes to future supernova, this one here is super exciting. It might actually explode at any moment. But because it's also far away from us, there's absolutely no danger. This is over 7,000 light years away from us. But despite solving so many mysteries about the supernova remnant, it still remains a very bizarre object. As a matter of fact, I think one of the next studies should really try to figure out exactly when it might explode again. And so as of today, this represents a very rare event that we barely know anything about. Which means that we'll definitely come back and discuss this again once there are some additional studies or someone else discovers something really exciting about this unusual guest star. And so until then, check out previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the show on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM it directly, or by joining channel membership that grants you early access. You can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.